Hi, I'm Jeff Worm from Studio Cycles and this is Indoor Cycling 101, session number four. What happens when a new bike is thrown together? Ever wonder why when you go to the gym and you have brand new bikes in the room they feel horrible or there's a brand new bike in the corner with an out of order sign on it? Typically when uh, new bikes arrive in a club, I'm going to talk about what happens under a couple of different uh, circumstances, whether it's a bike that's sent to your home or bikes that are delivered to a club. Because in my business I work uh, with both types of situations and when a new bike is delivered to a club it can either be pre-assembled from a warehouse somewhere or they'll, they'll actually deliver the bikes to the club in the box or if you order a bike online and it will come to you in a box and you're going to do the same thing that the guy at the warehouse does before the bike sent to the club or you're going to do the same thing that the guy at the club does when the box arrives. My favorite analogy is uh, the bike is built like an IKEA end table. In other words the box is open, the parts are taken out, um, the parts are screwed on and everything is tight and there you have it. You have a brand new bike. But there's so much more to a commercial indoor bike than screwing the parts on and making everything tight. In my experience, uh, having literally built and tuned tens of thousands of indoor group cycles, commercial and home version bikes, taking a brand new bike out of a box, bolting it together and using it never ever works well. In fact, in my experience of building so, so many bikes, I I can't I can't think of ever taking a bike out of a box, putting it together, even with care and concern, with just just uh, the initial incidental level assembly, getting on the bike and riding it, or testing mechanisms on the bike and having things uh, work the way that they're supposed to be, or at the very least working uh, at a palatable level. Um, first thing uh, that will reflect on a bike that's poorly assembled is the feel of the bike when the drivetrain is engaged. <coughs> there's, a, there's a number of different reasons that you'll feel conflict in a drivetrain. Uh, when the box arrives, the last person to touch that bike before it went into the box is the guy and, or, or girl, a man or woman in Taiwan who put the bike into the box and there typically is decent quality control at the uh, assembly level uh, or at the plant level where the bike is put into the box to be shipped but the box c comes a long ways from there to here and a lot of hands and forklifts and bodies touch that box so there's a lot of impact um, maybe the person uh, in the quality control area uh, who tests the drivetrain or the resistance mechanism or the leveler on the bottom of the bike its functionality wasn't having a, a very good day and they just they weren't paying particularly close attention whatever the reason may be there are literally dozens and dozens of things on the bike that uh, need, should be need to be uh, addressed when the bike is, is being put together and before it's ever used in a commercial setting or before that bike goes into your home and you start to ride it after you put it together. The drivetrain, uh, there are a lot of different components in the drivetrain that reflect on how the bike feels once it's put together and used. Um, the alignment of the crank with the flywheel, the tension of the chain, uh, the bearing assembly at the crank, uh, the flywheel bearings. Um, when I build bikes, uh, after we do the initial assembly and I get on to ride the bike, um, I've over the years uh, become sort of a human tuning fork. I can climb on the bike and, and, and gauge the drivetrain and pedal it and I feel all kinds of things that could or could go, that might, might be right and might be wrong. Flywheel bearings will give an indicator uh, if, they're not, if they're not right. Uh, an over or under tension chain will give huge uh, dynamic feelings and how the drivetrain feels when you engage it. Uh, the pedals, uh, the pedals sometimes uh, come from the factory with a bad bearing or with a lock nut uh, over tightened or under tightened. Um, but the drivetrain is key to uh, how the bike feels and how it works over a period of time. When a bike goes into a club, 
and it's pulled from the box and it's bolted together and the drivetrain is over tightened, which is typically the case, and the bike is immediately used, what happens is the drivetrain uh, very rapidly becomes compromised. And when I say compromised, that means if you use the bike with an over tightened drivetrain, uh, and that, and, and in parallel to that, a flywheel that's out of alignment, it'll compromise the drivetrain to the point where you can never back off from that, comp from that compromise. Typically, um, when a bike goes into a club and the drivetrain is over tightened, or if there isn't a lubricant on the chain and it's used within anywhere from two weeks to a couple of months, the drivetrain uh, will be compromised to the point where you can never get a palatable, optimal drivetrain adjustment again. Um, the other thing is the lubrication of the drivetrain. Um, of course, in the 21st century, you would believe that when you spend 800 or, or 1,000 or 1,500, or in the case of the e-spinner, which is a $5,000 piece of equipment, uh, everything would be ready to go and everything would be adjusted and lubricated uh, so that when it gets to you, it's ready to use. Um, typically, the bikes always need lubrication when they're brand new. Um, lubrication and grease throughout the bike. Uh, typically, when a bike is put together, whether it's by uh, a warehouse uh, personnel, a general fitness equipment warehouse, or a logistics company, um, their, in my experience, their biggest focus is how long does it take to get this done? When you're a company that deals with thousands and thousands of bikes, like most of those companies are, they want to get those bikes built and onto the next club as quickly as possible. And in my experience, with what I've, with what I do and with what I've done over the years, um, I've, I've come to understand what I call mechanical psychology, why a bike feels the way it does, uh, whether it's at the one month point, the three month point, the six month point, or the two year point. And typically it all goes back to the initial assembly of the bike. And when you pull the bike out and you do the IKEA end table assembly and everything's dry and everything's out of alignment, um, the bike may go together quickly, but over time, as the bike is deluged with sweat and the incidentals are turned over and over and over, all those areas slowly will become problematic. Uh, the mobility will suffer, uh, performance will suffer, and that's why when you go to a club, um, there's no consistency in the room because typically when you have a room with 20 or 30 bikes, one bike feels good, one bike feels horrible, one bike you know to stay away from, uh, one bike, the seat's hard to move. Typically that all goes back to when the bike was brand new and no lubrication or adjustment was, was implemented during the assembly process.